Ratchet and Clank ripped apart. Now I finally got around to playing this game and I was super excited to get to it after I had beaten Ratchet and Clank the 2016 one for the PS4. I just had knew I had to hop into Rift Apart before too long because I was just so tied back into the Ratchet and Clank series. As some of you may know if you've been around on the channel for a while, I, uh, I've only played the PS2 Ratchet and Clank games. I missed all the PS3 ones because I became an Xbox 360 kid after the PS2. So that was kind of the path I went. And unfortunately I missed a bunch of the, well, all of the PS3 ones. So yeah, I've been getting back into the Ratchet and Clank series and I absolutely love it. They did such a good job with Rift Apart and that's what I'm gonna talk about in today's video. Now first, I gotta mention just how gorgeous this game looks, like they did such a good job, I mean the PS5 graphics are phenomenal. It's actually mind blowing to me coming from some of the games that I play that are PS4 games on my PS5 and then playing the PS5 games, I do notice a substantial difference in the graphics, the frame rate, just how the overall game looks and feels. Um, I notice an a very big difference between the PS4 and PS5 games, which is good because you know you're buying a PS5, you want to have better graphics than you would on a PS4. But this game just looks absolutely incredible. It's such a gorgeous game, looks phenomenal, plays phenomenal. And now let's get into a little bit about the story. So I remember Dr. Nefarious from Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal as he was the main villain in that game and he's the main villain in this one, well, sort of. So basically he uses the Dimensionator, shatters a bunch of dimensions, cause a bunch of rifts in the dimensions and then you end up basically as Ratchet and Clank having to try and stop Dr. Nefarious. But by shattering all the dimensions and combining dimensions together, you end up getting a bunch of a mix mash of different characters and dimensional counterpart characters that are now colliding in the same dimension with each other. So instead of just Dr. Nefarious as your main enemy, you, all, you have Emperor Nefarious, his dimensional counterpart. And then same with Rivet and Kit as Ratchet and Clank's dimensional counterparts. So then of course your objective is to try and fix all the dimensions and get the Dimensionator fixed as it does get destroyed and then you're spending a good portion of the game with a mix of Ratchet and, and Rivet um, trying to do your job of fixing the Dimensionator so you can set everything right. Um, but of course you end up running into different hurdles along the way like you do with most games and one of the big ones being Emperor Nefarious just keeps showing up and stealing whatever you're doing or blocking your way and uh, Dr. Nefarious is just kind of like his little I guess minion if you will and it's kind of funny just seeing how wimpy Dr. Nefarious is compared to Emperor Nefarious his dimensional counterpart I just thought that was funny and they did a good job with that and I also thought it was really it was different you know playing as Ratchet and Rivet of course you guys can let me know down in the comments below I plan to try and go back and play a bunch of the PS3 Ratchet and Clank games that I missed but um, at least with the first three Ratchet and Clank games that I did play on the PS2 going the first game going commando and up your arsenal um, you only ever played as as Ratchet and yet of the odd little scenario here and there where you played as Clank as well in those games but um, yeah, other than that, I mean, you never really play it as another Lombax anyways um, in those old PS2 ones. So it was pretty cool to get to play as two different characters and you had different planets that were tied to each character. So some, so basically some planets you could only go on as Ratchet and some planets you could only go to as Rivet. And that was how they divided the, I guess, who you played as on each planet so you didn't really get to freely choose who you wanted to play as it was all planet specific and mission specific and now i want to talk about the weapons a little bit so you had all these i guess upgrade trees that you could do for each weapon you could upgrade whatever your favorite guns were with raritanium very similar type of deal as the 2016 ratchet and clank game so it was very, very familiar to me after playing that game, which was good. And I actually like this upgrading system. I mean, you can just pick and choose your favorite guns to upgrade along the way. As you do level them up, they will gain different abilities as well. But I really, really like that upgrading tree and it gives Raritanium a good use because then you can just keep 
keep upgrading your favorite guns and make them even better. And I really like the ammo upgrades. Those were kind of my favorites that I kept doing. And then of course there was some other upgrades as well that would help with, you know, increased damage for direct hits or so on. Like for the Warmonger, I know that was, that was one. If you got direct hits, then it would increase your damage that the rockets would do. So anyways, I really, really thought it was a good upgrade system. Again, very solid. And the leveling system for the guns was the same as it usually is. Um, you just have to do damage and use the weapon and then you get them leveled up. So there was this arena type thing in this game on this one planet that reminded me so much of the arena from Up Your Arsenal, which was the Annihilation Nation, I believe is what it was called. Um, and that was, I remember loving going into that arena. That was my favorite place to go to upgrade my guns and Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal. So this arena in this game definitely gave me some deja vu and some good nostalgia from uh, Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal just reminded me of all the good, all the amount of hours I spent on that Annihilation Nation trying to beat all the challenges, get all the bolt prizes, and then also just trying to upgrade all my guns too. So it was, it was a good blast of nostalgia doing all the arena battles as well in this game. And in this game, just like every other Ratchet and Clank game, there are collectibles to find on each planet. So the first, firstly, let's talk about the spy bots. So the spy bots, there's 10 to collect, and by collecting them, you get the Rhino 8, which is the best gun in the game. The Rhino has always been, and has been the best gun to try and get, or the most sought after gun to try and get in every single Ratchet and Clank game. At least in the old ones anyways, it was, yeah, you were always, I was always trying to get every requirement I could to get the Rhino, because once you got the Rhino, it just melted, and then I did get the Rhino in the Ratchet and Clank 2016 game, and it was unreal, so the Ratchet, the, the Rhino 8 in this game is phenomenal, and by collecting all 10 spy bots, you unlock the Rhino, so the spy bots kind of work as the counterpart, or the same idea as the holo cards in the 2016 Ratchet and Clank game as the holo cards in the 2016 one were the keys to get the Rhino. Once you collected all the Rhino holo cards, you got the Rhino. And in this game, the spy bots were that same key to get the Rhino. So I collected all the spy bots, got the Rhino just before the final boss fight, and it was an awesome gun to add to my arsenal of weapons for that final fight. Now, of course, just like all the Ratchet and Clank games, there is always bolts to collect, but not just the regular bolts you collect throughout the game, the specialty bolts. So there is gold bolts to collect in this game, just like all the other Ratchet and Clank games. I believe in Up Your Arsenal, they were titanium bolts instead for whatever reason, they changed it up in that game. But the, uh, the gold bolts in this game work just the exact same as they did in all the other games where they are just for bonus cosmetic cosmetic or a few gameplay I guess change buffs that you can do so you can do like infinite ammo you can do make your character have a huge head you can change the way Ratchet's wrench looks like there's a bunch of different little things you can do with each amount of gold bolts so in this game they work the exact same they're just little fun bonuses that are mostly just cosmetic or gameplay changes and they work the same as they do in any other Ratchet and Clank game, so gold bolts are another fun collectible to try and find on each planet as well. And then lastly, there was armor sets to collect, so that was the last collectible that I could find in each planet. So there was your armor sets, there was your gold bolts, and then there's your spy bots. So the armor sets were exactly as they sound. You could find boots, chest piece, and then a helmet. And once you got a full armor set, or even just parts of one, you could just throw on boots from one set if you like them better than boots from another set, and you could change the way Ratchet or Rivet looked with different armor. So they were also not too bad little collectibles to find throughout each planet as well. So that's definitely one of the things I always liked about the Ratchet and Clank games was the exploration to do on each planet to find the gold bolts, you know, try and get all the collectibles. And then also the exploration that you can do with various different things and the change the changes throughout gameplay that they always did where you have the grind rail sections and or the hoverboard races at least in the older games there was the hoverboard races and in this game there wasn't any hoverboard races but 
There was also the glitch sections where you'd throw glitch on to take care of some viruses on a machine. And then you also had these clank sections where you'd basically have to solve these little puzzles to get through to the end. And um, yeah, so there was lots of different moments where you'd change up the gameplay and they were always, you know, Ratchet and Clank games were always a lot of fun that way where it wasn't just running and gunning. There was also different things like the like the races and then the flying around on Trudy as well in this game added for some exploration as you were flying around. You could fly around on the map with Trudy on that one planet and then you had that one mission as well where you could take down all of the nefarious ships with Trudy while you're riding around with Trudy. So there's definitely, there's always different things than just the gun gameplay in the Ratchet and Clank games which I always found a lot of fun and it adds changes up the gameplay keeps it fresh all the time throughout and I just really really enjoy all the little mini games or different things with like the races and so on I've always really really enjoyed them in the Ratchet and Clank games and I'm glad that this game was the same as all the older ones as well now of course I can't do a Ratchet and Clank video without talking about the guns because the gunplay in Ratchet and Clank is so necessary and there's so many fun fun and goofy weapons in every single Ratchet and Clank game. Unfortunately there was no Sheepinator in this one like there was in the 2016 one. That gun I just loved. I thought it was hilarious. But I'll talk about some of my favorite guns in this game. Honestly my favorite gun was probably... You know, I, I would say the Rhino, but I didn't really get to use the Rhino a pile. I only got it just before the end of the game. But I would say the Headhunter was awesome for having a sniper rifle type deal. The Negatron Collider was awesome for shooting those beams of fusion at every single enemy. And it was it would just melt bosses too. And then, the of course, the Peacemaker slash Warmonger is always a good gun. That gun is phenomenal in this game, just like it was. I believe it was it was called the Warmonger in Ratchet and Clank 2016 as well. And if it was, I mean, the same gun. It was just you know a little rocket rocket launcher, and it's awesome. It's always a very very good gun. And in this game, it was a phenomenal gun as well. I really really liked the Mr. Fungi, Miss Fungal gun as well you just throw out these two little sidekicks that would just kind of stand there and or float there i guess and shoot the enemy so i always i really used that weapon a lot it was the miss, miss fungal mr fungi weapon as well the lightning the lightning rod was all right there too i didn't mind it um and then the buzz blades were similar as they were in the past games I remember a gun like the Buzz Blades. I don't know if it was called the same or quite the exact same, but I remember there being a gun like the Buzz Blades that was in Up Your Arsenal. So that gun was really, really good as well. And um, yeah, those were just some of my favorites there. The Black Hole Storm was really, really good too. It was reminding me a lot of that. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. I think it was the N60 Storm. I'm gonna have to look it up and see what it was, but there was a gun like it in the up your arsenal game as well and i just remember really, really liking it just kind of a basic automatic rifle type gun but really did the job back in up your arsenal and it, the black hole storm really was a good gun in this game as well i really liked it it was kind of like a mix between an assault rifle type weapon and like a mini gun because you had to wind it up and spin it up to shoot so yeah, those were some of my favorite guns. There's so many more great weapons as well, but those were just my favorites that I used a lot and that you're probably seeing in the gameplay me switching to a lot. I used the Peacemaker, the Buzz Blades, the Rhino at the end. Um, I used those guns a lot. I guess the Drill Hound, the Drill Pack, was one of my favorites as well. Really, really good gun where you could lock onto multiple enemies once I had it maxed out and it would just shoot out little... I guess little drill rockets because they would kind of drill through the ground and then jump up and hit the enemy. So they also did really, really good on bosses too. But yeah, those were all my favorite weapons. There's so many great guns in this game. I always love the creativity that Insomniac has when creating weapons for Ratchet and Clank games. They just do such a great job with the weapon development and weapon creation and creativity in each game. They never miss. It's always you know, they keep it fresh with some goofy type guns and then just some really, really strong guns and all the upgrades and everything that go with it. Just add to making the experience with each game so much fun. 
and the final boss fight against Emperor and Nefarious has been playing on the background for a little bit and I definitely have to talk about it. It was a phenomenal final boss fight. Um, it's just got so many different stages to it, like this stage right here where you're taking on the heart of Emperor and Nefarious' big power suit, robot suit, whatever you would call it. And for, to start off, you're basically just taking on his power suit or robot suit and then once you end up getting him weakened enough then you take on his heart and then after this then you finally get to battle one-on-one -on -one with Emperor and Nefarious not against his weapons and power-ups I mean you're not you're just one-on-one -on -one battling against him it's no more robot suit and it was just a phenomenal final boss fight with multiple different stages to keep things fresh and each stage wasn't too long either I mean it wasn't like one stage was a really big health sponge and one was just super quick and you were done with like in no time. Like they did a very, very good job with the pacing and the amount of health each stage had. I thought this final boss fight was phenomenal. Definitely one of my one of my favorite final boss fights in any of the Ratchet and Clank games I played. I really enjoyed the twenty sixteen final boss fight too, but I just thought it was too easy. Like and it could just been that I had the Rhino in that game and just melted Dr. Nefarious with the Rhino, but that boss fight was super easy. And I remember the older, the older Ratchet and Clank games having a little bit more difficult final boss fights, which, of course, I definitely want. I want the final boss fight to feel rewarding when you finally beat them. You know, I like the when the boss fights, when the final boss fights in a game are difficult enough where. It takes you a few tries to figure out their methods and their patterns before you can finally win and finish off the game. But that's just me. So anyways, I found this game was good. I I died, I think, once or twice on the final boss fight. It wasn't anything crazy, but at least it was harder than the 2016 Ratchet and Clank game. But yeah, to wrap everything up here, like I always do with all these videos, I'll let the final bit of gameplay, the end of the gameplay out here. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, um, <laughs> I don't know if it was just my game or this is a common glitch, but the final cutscene you'll see, uh, Ratchet, his voice is muted. Like he doesn't, nothing, none of his words, he's, he's his mouth is moving, but He's not speaking any words, so for whatever reason, there was some weird glitch going on with the final cutscene, which kind of sucked. Um, I would have liked to have heard what he was saying. It kind of ruined it a little bit, but yeah, just a forewarning that this the final cutscene, you won't be able to hear Ratchet say anything. He's just mute <laughs> for whatever reason. Maybe I found a new glitch. I don't know if anyone else has experienced that glitch, but yeah, I yeah, that was a little bit of a weird glitch to have right at the end of the game. But yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I absolutely loved Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. It's, you know, these Ratchet and Clank games are just all phenomenal in my mind and some of my favorite. They hold a very, a very special spot in my heart because I remember just Ratchet and Clank Going Commando was actually my first game, my brother and I's first game on our PS2 when we were kids. So Ratchet and Clank Going Commando what holds a very special place in my heart as it was my very first game on our old PS2 back in the day. And although I missed the PS3 Ratchet & Clank games, I've always been a Ratchet & Clank fan. I, I went back and played those good old Ratchet & Clank PS2 games here and there over the years. And there was definitely times where I thought about buying a PS3 um, just for the sake of being able to play the Ratchet & Clank PS3 games, but Anyways, now at least I guess I could sign up for PlayStation Plus and get to CloudStream play them now. So it's maybe someday I'll get around to doing that. And then if I do, I'll of course post videos on those games as well. But yeah, there's my long rant for the end of the video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And if you did, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all in the next one. You really are a couple of hot shots. I would love nothing more.
sorry for what I said before. You're my friend. And thank you. For coming back. Team. Dimension could use a couple heroes right about now. Where are we headed?